This is the launch control center. Inside are firing rooms. Unlike the circular concrete and steel blockhouses used in the past, the firing room is long and rectangular. The east end of the room faces pads A and B of Launch Complex 39. Large windows allow the launch crew to see the rocket lift from the pad. It is from here that the Saturn V will be subjected to automatic checkout. Dr. Von Braun tells why this is significant. We have learned uh, the hard way that uh, most rocket failures in the past were caused by inefficiencies or deficiencies rather in equipment and components of the flight uh, hardware that existed there even before the rocket was launched but the launch crew wasn't aware of it. It didn't have the visibility to know that there was a sticky relay or maybe a blown fuse in the rocket. And so we have provided an automatic checkout system where the entire rocket is checked out with the help of a computer in uh, something like 2,000 uh, distinct points uh, where we would like to diagnose the health of the rocket before it takes off. The major objectives of the upcoming flight will be to test out the Saturn V rocket for the first time, monitor the spacecraft systems during an eight-hour period, and ram the command module through the Earth's atmosphere at 25,000 miles per hour, simulating a return from the moon. At NASA's Manned Spacecraft Center, Houston, Texas, Mr. Glenn Lunny will direct the flight of Apollo 4. Here, he outlines the steps of the mission. Uh, the first and obvious one will be the launch phase from Cape Kennedy. There, the three stages of the Saturn V will light in sequence on their way to inserting the spacecraft into an orbit 100 nautical miles above the Earth. Uh, during the Earth orbit period, which lasts for about two revolutions or three, three hours, both vehicles are relatively quiet and uh, there's no real activity going on in the stages. At the end of that period, however, we prepare the uh, third stage of the Saturn V for its restart. That is, the burn which will simulate the burn we will eventually do to inject the spacecraft on the way to the moon. Uh, this burn period occurs at about three hours over the United States. It will be followed by a very small burn with the spacecraft uh, rocket engine, the service propulsion engine. Uh, this burn will be a small, only of about 15 seconds duration. After that time, while we were coasting up to an apogee of about 10,000 nautical miles above the Earth, both vehicles again become relatively quiet. At the end of that coast period, on the way back down, the spacecraft will be prepared again for a large service propulsion engine burn on the order of four and a half minutes. This large burn will produce conditions, re-entry conditions, which are very similar to the conditions we will encounter when we return from the moon. The entry phase of this flight is also interesting, although we won't monitor it in real time here from the control center. Interesting in that it will be a range of about 2,000 miles and the very high entry conditions which I talked about. The recovery phase will also be of interest to us because that's the proof of the pudding in the flight uh, and will be conducted in the Pacific about 500 miles northwest of Hawaii. The majority of the tests for the upcoming Apollo 4 flight are finished now. Those who have conceived and built the rocket and spacecraft will go on to produce others. But this is the first of the big Saturn Vs. If successful, it will represent a step forward, a giant step toward this country's exploration of the moon. been an Aeronautics and Space Report presented by NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. <laughs>